katani molishman litisha o la asara o la hasa velishenim velishnem velishenim velishnem asa velishnem asa. A child is same size on the eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, or twelfth day. Lo pachot velo yoter, not earlier, not later. Hey, hakitad. Ki kedarko lishmana. In normal circumstances, uh, we do it on the eighth day. No lad, hazein hashmashot nimo litisha. If he was born during twilight, he's circumcised on the night. Bein hashmashot sheler of Shabbat nimo lasara. If he was born on twilight on the eve of Shabbat, he's circumcised on the tenth. It's curious. Yom tov lacha Shabbat nimo lacha asa. Lachar asa. If Yom Tov falls after Shabbat. If Yom Tov falls after Shabbat, he's circumcised on the 11th. Shnei Yamim shall Rosh Hashanah nimol l'shnei Masar. If the two days of Rosh Hashanah are straight after Shabbat, he's circumcised on the 12th. Katan hachole en mohalin oto ad sheyavri. Uh, so with a sick child, sick child, we do not circumcise him until he becomes healthy. Do you want to? Oh, born at twilight. He ex- he explains it in the expansions pretty well. Although a child, this is the Mishnah, is generally circumcised at eight days, as the first states, not the eighth day, blah blah blah. Nevertheless, at times he is circumcised at nine days, at times ten days, eleven days, or twelve days, no earlier, no later. How so? In his usual manner, a child is circumcised at eight days. If he was born at twilight, mm-hmm. it is therefore uncertain on which day he was born, mm-hmm. he is circumcised at nine days. Fascinating. As his circumcision is postponed due to the uncertainty, as perhaps the eighth day from his birth has not yet arrived. If he is born at twilight on Shabbat Eve, he is not circumcised on the following Shabbat due to the uncertainty whether it is the eighth or ninth day since his birth, and only a circumcision definitely performed at the appointed time overrides Shabbat. Rather, mm. he is circumcised on Sunday, and the result is that he is circumcised at ten days. And that's why it progresses on and on, depending on whether yes. it's a Yom Tov afterwards. Exactly, and if it's a one-day Yom Tov or two-day two day Yom Tov. Very good. Okay, so it's the uncertainty. Mm. Okay. Mara. Ama Shmuel. Chalatatu Chama. Once fever has left him, not in law, kol shiva lahav rotov. We give him all of seven days from his recovery. Ibai lehu, they inquired, mi be'inan me'et la'et. Do we require... Um, Seven twenty-four hour periods. Tashma, come learn. Detani luda luda Torah brisa. Yom hevrato kiyom hivaldo. The day of his recovery is the same as the day of his birth. My love, is it not? Ma yom hivaldo lo bina me'et le'et. Just as the day of his birth, we do not require um, seven twenty-four hour periods. Af yom hivrato, havrato, lo bina medlet. So too, on the day of his recovery, we do not require seven twenty-four hour periods for circumcising him. Lo. Adif yom havrato, miyom hivaldo. The day of his recovery is equal to and even greater than the day of his birth. It's more stringent, it says here. De ilu yom hivaldo, lo bina medlet. For with the day of his birth, we do not require seven twenty four hour periods. <coughs> For with the day of his birth we do not require seven twenty four hour periods. But Ilu Yom Hivrato Bainam Etlaya. Whereas with the day of his recovery we do require twenty seven twenty four hour periods. Sounds to me like they're not sure what the halacha what's the halacha? Do we have a halacha? Um the sick baby that became physically ill is not circumcised until he regains his health. His circumcision is postponed seven complete days from the 
time he recovered from his illness. Right. So we're stringent. Yep. We were all stringent. And that's the whole point of this ah. argument. Excellent. Yeah, because you have to give it 724 hour periods from the time of his healing. Mm. So not the day, but act, actual time you observe that he's healed or you know, his recovered. Which is very sensible, really. Yeah. Mishnah. Elohim titin hamach vin et hamila. These are the shreds that impede the circumcision. Basa hachafe et rov ha atara. Flesh that covers the large part of the corona. Do you have corona? Yes. Okay. That must be the head. So, um, so if you perform circumcision and perhaps there are still bits of flesh on the corona. The Eino Achel Bitruma. Excuse me on this note. Beg your pardon. These are the shreds that impede the flesh that covers the large part of the corona. The Eino Achel Bitruma. One may not eat truma. Uh, so if you still have shreds on your schmeckel, on your corona, mm. you can't eat truma. Why would you eat truma? You can't eat truma. You'd have to be a kohen to eat truma. Yeah. I suppose so that's a kohen too. Here we go. A kohen yeah. may not eat truma unless he's circumcised. Even if he's circumcised, uncircumcised for a valid reason, e.g. two of his older brothers died from circumcision, ah, he may not eat truma. Any shreds remaining on a kohen that invalidate the circumcision, therefore disqualify the kohen from any trauma. There you go. The Sh- shreds of flesh that invalidate the circumcision. This is halakha. After circumcision, if skin remains that covers most of the height of the corona, even in a single place the circumcision is invalid. However, if only a small amount of skin is left and it does not cover most of the corona, it does not invalidate the circumcision. After the fact, nevertheless, ab initio, it is fitting to circumcise the infant completely. So a small amount is okay. Mm. Okay. The im haya ba'al basar. If a child is fleshy, fleshy, a fleshy baby. A fleshy baby that looks as though he has not been circumcised is examined. If he appears circumcised when his penis is erect, there is no need to circumcise him again. But his skin is pulled back and held in place. However, if he does not appear to be circumcised when his penis is erect, the infant is circumcised a second time in order to avoid the appearance of being uncircumcised. Mm-hmm. So, right, right. He should rectify because of the appearance of wrongdoing. Good point. Mal velo para et hamila keilu lo mal. He circumcised but did not uncover the circumcision. He circumcised but did not uncover the circumcision. It's as if he did not circumcise. Oh, this is certain. So he didn't, Logic about that. he didn't split the membrane underneath it and pull it back to expose the corona. Priya. Is that Priya? Does it say Priya there? Yeah. No. So this is Priya. Kamara. Amar Rabbi Avina Amar Rabbi Yirmiya Baraba Amar Rav Basaha Chofet Rav Govaha Shel Atara Flesh that covers the larger part of the height of the corona and he's added as well as most of its circumference as well as most of its circumference is what Stein said uh-huh the im haya ba'al basavechulay if a child was fleshy so lots lots and lots of skin lots of full skin ama shmuel Katan, so fleshy means that even when it's erect, it still covers it. Yeah. Amar Shmuel, Katan hamesur bal bebasar, an infant who is thickly coated with flesh, ro'in or we examine him. Kol zman she 
mitkashe v'nire machul. When his membrum is erect, he appears circumcised. Eino tzarich lamo. One need one need not circumcise him again. The imlav tzarich lamo. And if not, one must circumcise him again. Right. That makes good sense, I suppose. Um Hmm. Have you noticed that I don't think they've once actually used the, the Hebrew word for penis? What is the Hebrew word for penis? Zayin. Really? Ain't not Tariq Lamol. One need not circumcise again. The Imla for it, right, Tariq Lamol. The Matnita Tana. Tonah Brisa, Rabban Shimon ben Gamliel Omer, Katan Hamesur Bal Bebasar, an infant who is thickly coated with flesh. Ro'ino to examine him. Kolzman Shemit Kasher ve'Enon Ire Machul. When the membrane is erect, he does not appear circumcised. Tzarich lemulo. One must circumcise him again. The im lav Eino Tzarich lemulo. One need not circumcise him again. My ben Ayehu. What's the difference between them? Ika ben Ayehu Nire ve'Enon Nire. There is between them where he appears. But, to some extent, he does not appear circumcised. <coughs> he appears circumcised? Mm -hmm. yeah, does not appear, yeah. It seems to be the same word. Mal velopra. If he circumcised but did not do priya. Tanurabanan. Hamal omer. The circumciser, uh, the moil says. Asher kedishon b'mitzvah tzivano al hamila. So he uses a bracha. Uh, I assume when he when he says bracha, he's referring to the bracha. Oh, that's that's the that's the that's the bracha you use on at circumcision. Avi haben omer. Asher kedishon b'mitzvah tzivano la hachnisu b'brito. Shall Avraham Avinu, who sanctifies us with his commandments and command us to bring him into the covenant of Avraham our father. Ha Omdim Omrim and everyone else says they proclaim Keshem Shinikanas Labrit Kah Yikanes Latura Lechupa Lamasim Tovim. Just as in, as he entered into the covenant, so may he enter into Torah Kupa and Masim Tovim. Torah marriage canopy and good deeds. <coughs> on that bracha where it says just as he entered into the covenant so may he enter into the study of Torah Chuppah and Masim Tovim may actually be directed towards the Father mm. right which as in instead of they're saying to, may the baby Enter into Torah, Chupa and Masim Tovim. It's saying, may the Father lead him to Torah. Oh. Um, and the one who sang the bracha says, Asher, Kitash, Yedid, Mibeten. We sanctify the beloved one from the womb. Chok Bishero Sam placed the decree in his flesh, but said to Av, Chatan Be'ot, Brit Kodesh, and sealed his offspring with the sign of the Holy Covenant, Al Ken Bishazot El Chai Chelkenu, therefore, as a reward for this, I live in God our portion. Tzave Lehatzil Yedidut She'erenu Mishachat, give the command to rescue the beloved of our flesh from destruction. Laman Brito Asher Sam Bivsarenu, the sake of his covenant that he placed in our flesh. Baruch atah Hashem koreh tabrit. Blessed are you Hashem who establishes the covenant. <coughs> and now circumcision for one who converts. Hamal et gerim omer. Baruch atah Hashem elokeinu melech ha'alam. Hashem gerishonu b'tzad tzivan al hamilah. Regarding circumcision. V'amavarech omer. And the one who says the bracha says. Hashem gerishonu b'tzad tzivan al hamilah. Lamul et ha'gerim. 
who has sanctified us with his commandments and commanded us to circumcise the converts, Ula Hatif, Mehem, Dam, Brit, and to draw from them the blood of the covenant. So they still need. Yep. She il male dam brit lo nit kayemu shamaim v'aret for without blood of the covenant heaven and earth would not endure. Shne mar im lo briti yomam v'layli chukot shamaim v'aret lo samti. If not for my covenant of day and night, the statutes of heaven and earth I would not have established. Berachot Hashem koret habrit who establishes the covenant. Hamal et havadim omer, one who circumcises slaves, says, Canaanite slaves, thank you. Asheke Rishon of the Sabbath, Yuvano Alhamila, who has sanctified us with his commandments and commanded us regarding circumcision. Vameverach omer, and one designated to recite the bracha, says, Asheke Rishon of the Sabbath, Yuvano Lamol et havadim, who has sanctified us with his commandments and commanded us to circumcise the slaves. The Ule Hatif Mehem Jambrit, and to draw from them blood of the covenant, shil male dambrit chukot shamay va'aretz lo nitkayemo. For without blood of the covenant, heaven and earth would not endure. Shneemar im lo briti yomam velayla chukot shamay va'aretz lo samti. Right, the same idea, the same thing. Baruch atah Hashem koret habrit. Hadran alecha Rabbi Eliezer Dimila. Hadran alach. Perek Esrim. Yeah. What's it called? Tolin? Tolin. Rabbi Lezer Amer. Tolin et hamishameret be Yom Tov. We can suspend a strainer on Yom Tov. We can suspend a strainer on Yom Tov. Right. What's that for? Well, it seems to have grapes. So. A strainer consisted of a rim with a handle above it. Straining was accomplished by fabric that was stretched over the rim of the container and tied at the bottom. Mm-hmm. We can suspend a strainer on Yom Tov and on Shabbos. But not in let's hallelujah the Shabbat. And we may pour into a suspended strainer on Shabbat and certainly on Yom Tov. We can pour into a suspended strainer. Oh, I suppose, what, like a cup of tea? Oh, well, I suppose because you want to get the dregs out of wine, for instance, maybe. Ah, that might be a better idea. Um, the Chachamim Omrim, so that's what Rebbe Leazar said. The Chachamim Omrim, ain't all in it, Meshamerad be Yom Tov. We may not suspend a strainer on Yom Tov. And definitely not on Shabbos, but ain't not in the Taluya be Shabbat. We may not pour into a suspended strainer on Shabbat. Aval notin le tluya beyom tov. But we may pour into a suspended strainer on yom tov. Kamara. Hashta rabbi lezev osufe ohel arai lo mos finan. Now, rabbi lezev holds we do not even add a temporary tent onto an existing tent on yom tov. Le me ev. Vad would he permit constructing a temporary tent, i.e., suspending a strainer, even initially? My here. So what's the ruling where it was prohibited even temporarily adding to an existing tent on Yom Tov? Ditznan, we learned in the Mishnah. Pekacha chalon, a window shutter. Rabbi Lezer Omer. Bizman shekashur v'talui, when it's attached. Uh, and the shutter is suspended in the air. Pokikimbo, we can shutter with it, right? The yeah. imlav, however... If not, meaning if it's not suspended in, in this way, and Pokakimbo, we cannot shutter with it. It is rabbinically prohibited, prohibited to do so, even though the shutter is placed 
placed over the window only temporarily. In either case, we may shutter with it. Okay, so that's what the sages say. And Rebbe has said that you can't do it if it's not being suspended. Vamar Rabba Bar Chana Amar Rabbi Yochanan Hakol Modim She'ein Osin Ohel Arai Bat Chila Biyontov all agree that we may not erect a temporary structure initially on Yom Tov. And it's not, and we don't need to say it's on Shabbat, obviously. If they disagree only where you're permitted to make a temporary addition to an existing structure, like a shara. Shirabi Lezer or Mer, Ein Mosafin Mosifin Bi Yom Tov. For Rebbe Lezer says we may not make a temporary addition on Yom Tov. And we don't need to even say further about Shabbat, that it's forbidden on Shabbat. While the sages say, we can make uh, an addition on Shabbat, and we don't need to say that we can do so on Yom Tov. Hmm. So the question is, if he prohibits Temporarily adding, temporarily adding to an existing structure, how then can he permit the construction of a strainer mm. on Yom Tov, which creates a temporary tent initially? Rabbi Eliezer Savar like Rabbi Yehuda. So he goes according to the opinion of Rabbi Yehuda. With regard to actions that facilitate preparation of food on a festival. Ah, to Tanya. Because it was taught in Barosa, Ein ben Yom Tov la Shabbat. There's no difference between Yom Tov and Shabbos. Ela ochel nefesh bilvad, except for food preparation alone. Rabbi Yudah matir af machshirei ochel nefesh. Rabbi Yudah permits even uh, preparations, preliminaries of food preparation. Uh, thus Rabbi Yudah maintains. A labour which is a preliminary food preparation, such as the placing of a strainer, would be permitted on Yom Tov. And he's spent uh, Rabbi Yehuda permits even actions that facilitate food preparation on a festival, e.g. fixing utensils with which food is prepared on the fest- festival. I.e. a strainer. And similarly, Rabbi Yehuda permits the suspension of the strainer. Aim otherwise constitute a prohibited labour in order to prepare wine for use on the festival. It would seem so. It would otherwise constitute a prohibited labour. So what's the point of using a strain again? Well, to make the wine fit to drink on the festival. What for the purpose of straining through it? You get decent wine out of it, you leave the leaves, and you know, all the bits and pieces behind. So you actually pour wine through it? Yeah. I'm curious that that would bother. It's a, I think it's a mistake going this with grapes. And so do I, yeah. That's what we're talking about, is that pouring the thing in it. Suspending a strain of wine. On Shabbat or a festival that is prohibited to stretch a cloth strainer over a base in order to filter sediment from wine. Mm. One who does so performs a prohibited labor of making a tent. On Shabbat, it is also prohibited to place wine with sediment into a strainer that was suspended before Shabbat. However, it is permitted to do so on a festival in accordance with the tent of the rabbi. So we can do preparations preliminaries to a preparation of food. But you can't do the preparation on the Shabbos. Shabbat or the Chaz. You've got to do it beforehand. Isn't Rebbe the Ezra saying that you... Isn't it Halakha saying that you can do the straining on? The Halakha is saying that you can do the straining on the festival, not on Shabbat. But you have to have had the strain to set up before the Chaz came in. We say that we heard Rebbe Huda permit 
What? The machshirin sheyi efshel asotam mer yom tov. This is only concerning preliminaries which could not have been done before yom tov. The machshirin sheyefshel asotam mer yom tov mi shamat le. Concerning preliminaries which could have been done before yom tov. However, did you ever hear permission from him? The Rabbi Eliezer Adifa mit Rabbi Yoda. The view of Rabbi Eliezer is greater than that of Rabbi Yoda. Wow. Wow. Unlike Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Eliezer does not distinguish between actions that facilitate food preparation uh, that can and those that cannot be performed on the eve of the festival. Hmm. So what does Rabbi Lezer say? Are we allowed to put up a strainer on yes, Yom Tov? he's saying if you can do everything you need to so do that's to the facilitate mm. the uh, preparation of food. But the halakha is that you can't. You can't, but you can strain. Yes. Beautiful. The Chachamim Arim. Ibai Lehu. They inquired. Tala mai. If one suspended, what's the law? Is he biblically or rabbinically liable? If he suspended a strainer unwittingly, is the way he's expanded it. I don't think it's impossible to do it. I don't think it's possible to do it unwittingly. Unwittingly, it would have to be if you if you did it and it was wrong. I forgot it was the fact. And your wife said to you immediately after, What have you done, shit face? <laughs> <laughs> maybe, she, maybe you stupid idiot. <laughs> Depends how contemptuous she's feeling on that particular day. Do you know what, you know what I saw this morning? What? I saw this morning that, um, you know, redhead matches? Yeah. So they were a big Australian company. Mm. which got sold off overseas. As usual. As usual. So, of course, Dick Smith got in his knickers in the knot about it, and he brought out his own mm. redhead matches. But he didn't call them redhead matches. Because, yeah, you know, all of his products are named after his own his, himself. Oh. So instead of redhead matches, they're called dickhead matches. You're joking. I'm not joking. They really, they really were on the market. They were only on the market for a couple of years. And now they're... Like a their collector's, collector's item, item. yeah, dickhead matches they're called. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, you think some kind of person who knew him would have pointed out to him? I'm sure he knew. Actually, <laughs> in fact, he did know because apparently the back of the box of matches said only a dickhead would sell all of our Australian-made icons ah, overseas. Oh, well, that's good. <laughs> so he definitely did it on purpose. It's brilliant, though. <laughs> anyway, you know where they make redhead to... matches now? Oh, I should imagine China or something. Sweden. Sweden. Well, Sweden. Um, there was a big financial... TNT. Yeah, but there was a big financial scandal at the back in the twenties, uh, where. The, there was a Swedish millionaire uh, who was known as the Match King, mm-hmm. and it turned out that he'd been fiddling the books. Mm. Uh, but he was he was a really big name you know, in the style of Rockefeller. You know, he was considered in that league the Match King, and the whole thing collapsed. There was financial disaster. In the tw- late twenties, I think it was about, around about the time of the Great Depression. I used to know his name, but it's gone from my head. Okay, let's finish this off. Yep. The Chacham um, Rim. Uh, if you unwittingly, did you say? Yeah. yeah. Suspended a strainer. What's the law? Are you liable biblically or rabbinically? Amar of Yosef, Talachayev Chatzar, 
you, if you suspend a restrainer, you're liable to a khatat, which sounds like a biblical um, liability. Like anyone who unwittingly performs a labour prohibited by Torah law. Right. Amale Abaye, Abaye said to Rabbi Yosef, Ela ma'ata talakuza besikta. But now, if one were to suspend a jug from a peg, Hachanami Dimichayev, would it also be that he's liable? Quite frankly, I think that's a stupid question. Well, why would you be hanging a well, jug from a peg? Well, you know, you want to get off. You don't have cupboards, etc. You hang it on a peg sticking out of your wall above the handle. Uh, but in what way does that equate with making a tent? It's not as if you made the jug then. You're just taking a container that you've got and hanging it on the wall. I think he's act- that's what he's saying. I think he's actually being... Uh. I think he's. I think he's being rhetorical. Oh, good. That's good. <laughs> yeah, surely not. Mm. Why then should one also be biblically liable? Mm. I would have imagined that was so clear that he 